Okay, let me know if that's better. It might help if I turn the microphone on. <laughs> Okay, and I'll turn the mic down on my computer so I don't get that reverb. So let me know if that worked, uh, did that work out better? There's a slight delay in what I'm seeing here on the camera and what you're seeing here on the computer. It's probably about a five or maybe 10 second delay. Cool, thanks Brian, appreciate it. Hey, so, okay, let me go back over what I was talking about. So most of you who are watching right now know that I'm making a kinetic ball sculpture table. I've only got about 11 inches of space to deal with, so gravity is a commodity. When the ball goes down to the base of the acrylic box, I need to bring it back up. So today, or part of today, is I'm going to be building another lifter using the inch and a quarter ball bearing that I use for the sculpture. So what happens is the ball gets into here, say from a track, you're gonna have a lever that will pull this out. Now I haven't put this together permanently, obviously. I've just been trying it. So, Let's try that again. When the ball gets there to the sled, it goes up and then you can push back and it'll bring the ball up each time. So I've started making more of these levers and that's what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna attach these levers uh, to the lifter and see if by the end of this video, we can get it to go out that hole right there. So let me take a quick look here. Yep, it's working. Hey Tony, how's it going buddy? Um, Hey Barry, what's up buddy, how you doing? Great, what's up everybody? So yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Let's go ahead and put this down on the operating table. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the, the holes necessary. And for most of this sculpture, I've been using stainless. Um, and it wasn't until maybe yesterday or the day before yesterday, um, up to that point, I had thought, oh, you know what, I'm just gonna powder coat this. So I could have used mild steel if I wanted to, but for me, I wanted to use my TIG machine because it's a little bit more delicate working with something that small. Uh, but then I realized if I use a, if I get it powder coated, it's gonna put a thicker layer on the tracks and everything that I just built. So it may, I don't know for sure, but it may throw off some things that would then have to be rebuilt and I don't wanna do that. So I'm probably just gonna end up using a spray paint and then putting like an acrylic uh, like car clear coat on it. That way it's nice and durable. So this particular lifter is actually going to be made uh, with mild steel and stainless just because it's what I have in my shop and hey I'm gonna paint it so let's get these new holes drilled and hope that these are gonna work out the way they should um, this is kind of a trial first piece But if it works out to, to do what I want it to do the first time around, then it is the piece. Because I'm using eighth inch rod, I'm just using like an eighth inch bit. I wanna keep it nice and tight so I don't have a lot of slop. The question is, whether or not that when I start adding in these other pieces, I suppose what I should do is I can go ahead and weld this in. 
because that seems to be working. At least, let's do that. Again, back on the operating table. Now I'm going to use my, my MIG machine. Like I said, I'm actually using mild steel. Sorry, I have to go over and get the thing plugged in real quick. And we're back in action over here. Because really all I'm doing is I'm just putting in like the little small tack welds. So let's make sure that I move over here so I have a good ground. And because I'm still using the flux core on this, I have some anti-splatter. Give it a quick shot. And that'll do that right there. I don't want to weld that little sled. All right, that will work for that. And will now stay where I need it to stay. So, let's see. Now I gotta wipe off that slop. Um, just because it's very greasy. I think it's made out of fish oil. Kind of has a fishy smell. My brother works for a company called uh, Kimball Midwest. Um, this company. They, they offer all kinds of industrial type of uh, cleaners and solutions and like this anti-weld splatter um, it works really well now I can you know add gas to my MIG machine or I can just use my TIG machine that uses gas or do stick but I'm just comfortable using my flux core um, and this prevents all the splatter so it keeps it nice let me turn off this machine over here Uh, hey, greetings from Poland. Right on. Hey, hey. All right. So now what's interesting is it's about trying to line up these pieces. The one that I saw online was quite a bit smaller. So they almost have to rest. They have to rest right here on the on the other pipe. If not, they just fall down like that. So we're going to have to come up with a way that they stay where I want them to stay. But one of those ways is I'm going to kind of grind down this edge and that way it'll be a little bit more flat. I tell you what, we'll turn you over here. And if you come back tonight, I think I'm going to live feed again tonight, uh, probably about 5 o'clock. Um, the wood that's up there is actually going to go on a reception desk that I am building right now as well. And so, I'll probably do a little bit of work on that. Follow me around here, follow me there. All right, perfect. So, 
That needs to balance there, but I think in order to balance that, we need to, we need to make sure that this little collar that I made will actually do what it's supposed to do. Right now, it's a little tight. Hang on just a second. Let me see if I can just do that with this. I use Pam cooking spray. I believe in Pam cooking spray, man. That stuff is like, it's pretty amazing for cooking, but yeah, I would probably do the exact same thing. But because my brother works for that company, I figured, ah, you know, he'll send me some free stuff. Oh, and um, there is a product. There's a product that he sent the other day. It's called Thermashield Heat Protection Gel. So if uh, this would work great if like you're a plumber and you're trying to solder some things maybe in the wall and you don't want uh, the wall to catch on fire. Um, this is really good. I also have somewhere here in the shop, it's, uh, oh, here's right there. It's a piece of felt, uh, but it's fire, uh, fireproof felt, fire retardant felt. Um, it looks like a piece of felt. This works really good as far as keeping the flame away from uh, things in the wall. So a quick story. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna say this. So back before having my own shop, I, uh, I had my own home repair business here in Phoenix. And I was working on a job where I had to reroute some of the uh, copper, some of the plumbing. And so I was sweating everything that I could, but then there was a section in the wall that I really couldn't do outside. It had to be done in the wall. And so I removed as much of the insulation that I could and I figured, oh, this will just be a quick sweat, no problem. But what I didn't realize is that there was still a little bit of water in the line and it wasn't sweating the way I needed to sweat. And for whatever reason, um, all of a sudden, the flame that I was using on the copper actually caught some of the two by four uh, on fire um, and it was like a small splinter that had you know shot from a nail or whatever but that small little sliver of wood that caught on fire dropped and got into the insulation down below where I was actually uh, sweating the pipe talk about panic um, on a job, I usually bring water because I'm always drinking. I ran, I grabbed a gallon of water that I had, and I flushed that entire wall, reached in, pulled out, you know, like smoldering um, uh, insulation, you know, burning the hands a little bit, but I'm like, okay, worst case scenario, my hands are burnt, but the house is still standing. Um, yeah, I had to take about 30 minutes after that to kind of just dial down and figured, oh my God, I almost caught this person's house on fire. That would have been just, that would have been the end. So yeah, I explained that to my brother and he sent this to me and this has been a lifesaver ever since. Uh, but then he sent this to me because I was trying to do a, uh, a project where I didn't want the discoloration. Oh, actually, well, it was this project here. Um, I didn't want the discoloration coming through on the uh, steel that I had just welded from behind. Um, it didn't work. You can still see the discoloration, uh, but it does work if you're welding something and you put kind of a barrier there and the heat won't transfer and you can just pick up the piece afterwards. So anyway, so that was just kind of a quick, you know, uh, made a mistake. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna get this piece welded in place. Get rid of another piece of fire starter there. All right, let's use the MIG again.
It's funny that I'm just comfortable using my MIG machine. I've had it for 25, 30 years maybe. And uh, I just really like it, I prefer it. Let's move it over here so I actually have a ground on it. Turn down that wire speed just a little bit. I was welding some thicker stuff and had it up on a higher setting. And uh, I just turned it down for this, but forgot to turn down the wire speed. So, let's see if we can get the next piece in. So, if you notice, or you see that I'm sweating just a little bit. Um, it's like mid-October and we're supposed to get like uh, low 90s today. Um, but in order to do this and kind of be heard, I have to turn off my big fan back there so that, like, there's no real air circulation going on right now. Um, which is totally fine by me. All right, so now what it doesn't do, well, it, it does, but it doesn't, see? Uh, it's not moving as freely. Part of that is because I just welded it super hot, so you know you got a little bit of metal expansion there. Um, but while it is hot and that metal is expanded, I'll run that eighth inch drill bit in there. And that might give me a little bit more Yeah, that uh, works. But now the question is, let's move that back over here and let's see what happens. Ah, see it's not doing it. This needs to be, keeps pushing it off. All right. How do we keep that from falling off? See, that's what I noticed about the other one um, that the guy made is out of wood. Like a, uh, um, the main structure's out of wood. The wires that he's using are much shorter, so they don't have a chance to bend and flex the way these do. So, yeah, I gotta come up with something here. Holla, Whoa. <laughs> Oh, that's cool, Barry. It's good to kind of stay busy, right? 68 degrees? Oh my gosh, man, I think I'd be freezing already. I'm such a desert rat. Okay, so that's not working the way we want it to work. So, that goes up no problem. Now that one's dropping, okay. So the ball is pushing itself out. Let's see. If I put guides on this, the ball will hit that and won't be able to get by. So how do we keep that from going over the edge? Unless what I have to do is I just have to get a thicker, might have to get a thicker rod. Something that doesn't flex as much. Because 
because that's all it is. It's just flexing. But if I can get it to do what I need it to do there. So this is part of the frustrating process, I suppose, of trying to do something that you've never done before. It's always it's exciting, but at the same time, it can get a little frustrating. Okay, what do I have I could use? I do have some quarter inch. The quarter inch is the same diameter as that spacer. Hmm. Can you add an angled strut into the top? of the third rail, strengthen the lateral support. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Something that keeps it from pushing out. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. So you're thinking like if this is if this is what turns, if I turn it this way, add something maybe like here to keep it from pushing out. 55 degrees in the old berry land there. Nice. Double the track, put braces in the middle. Yeah. Jason, that's another thought, yes. Is maybe... Maybe use the type of track that I've been using and that whole thing does its up to do Maybe, maybe that's what it is. Because here... issue that I have with the double track, if that's what you were talking about, Jason, is like once it gets too far out, it won't be able to push it up the incline. But if I do the bracing, let's try that. Let's try one with a brace. All right. Not sure either, but we'll find out. We'll find out if it affects the roll. Okay. So let's put this over here for a second. Let's work on a... Let's see, which one am I? That's this one. All right. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some more of this rod. Let's measure us out a small section. Then we'll find a middle, put a bend in it. See if that will add about seven and a quarter, so Three and five eighths is my center. What did I say? Is that this one here? Okay. Trim that up a little bit. I don't think that it would affect the ball. 
if I put it on the right side. If I put it on the outside, I think we should be good. Um, let's see. Get all these pieces in place, and then I'll see if I can just TIG weld those little suckers where I need them. I have to say, this is one of the reasons why I enjoy doing this live feed stuff. Because then I can talk to people. Get ideas. Collaborate, share. Do oh, I keep going just a little too big or a little too small? All right, there we go. All right, so I need a way to hold this into place. So, I do have some spacers here. Ah, oh, here they are. Sometimes I just need somebody to be in here to clean up after myself. I'm such a mess. All right, let's put you there, let's put you here, and you go right there in the middle. All right, a little bit of weight to keep, where, keep that all where it's supposed to be, all neat and pretty. All right. So is it Hal Booyah? Halle Booyah? Hail Booyah. Habula. Hala Booyah. That sounds like something you would yell like you jump off a cliff. Habuya! And then you just like dive. Sounds like something that uh, is very Louisiana, but we said California, huh? All right, here we go. Let's see if this is gonna see if this is gonna work. little one had to pull away from it. Gosh doggone it. Looks cool. All right. Whoa, let's see. So, it's Thursday already. I don't even have a video for this Saturday. Still gotta work on that. I wanted to make a monster in the box. I don't know if you've seen those. Got a big box. Somebody walks by it, the box shakes. But because I don't have a lot of time, because I'm working on this, um, I wonder if I could make kind of like a, a trap door.
It definitely didn't move out as much, so that's a positive thing. Plus, I like that kind of structural look that it's, it, it has. Um, see if I can kind of show you. So I think that would actually work pretty good. Um, let's bring this back over here and see if I can keep this balanced. But as you can see, as it goes by and it wants to come back over, it doesn't flex much at all. Dude, dude, ha. Yeah, what do you call it? Habuya, helbuya. Great idea, brother. Tool, tool, tool. Okay, let's see. Take that same idea, we're gonna go up a rung and see, see if that'll work with that. Okay, we're back in business. We are actually, what do you get? Cooking with gas, is that what they say? I'm cooking with gas now. So let's make another one. All right, cutters. You know, sometimes I just, I need to like, I need to measure things sometimes. Sometimes it's just such an organic process. You know, you kind of look at something and you go, okay, yeah, that'll work. You know, trim it up as you go. Work on the details kind of as you go. All right, let's see, what we got? Six and a half, so we're gonna go three and a quarter. All right, three and a quarter. Great. Perfect the mundo. All right, let's take a piece of this. Let's trim that up. You know, I have to say, yesterday, um, I had a bit of a, but also add a little, a little mouth on the tip, which hugs the track low. <laughs> you said mouth and you said hug. Not good, Jason. <laughs> All right, um, yeah, so yesterday, it was one of those days where it, if you haven't been watching, this is this project is on a really, really hard time frame. Uh, I'm supposed to be done with this and another big project for the same company, November 1st. Um, and so I am really starting to feel the pressure of, you know, having to get this all done. 12 hour days, you know, just working nonstop on this thing. And so, I won't say who, but I will say someone very close to me um, needed help. They needed a ride. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, this is gonna take three hours out of my day where I should be working, but again, I can't say no to this particular person because, well, they mean the world to me. And, um, so I ran my errands in the morning and I got some stuff done that needed to get done involving this particular project. And I met the person, picked them up, picked their stuff up, and then proceeded to drive an hour and a half out of town to where they needed to go. Um, we had a great conversation. Uh, it, was, it was nice to kind of get out of the shop for a little bit and, you know, just 
just have a normal conversation with somebody. Um, and then kind of serendipitously, you know, as I'm driving back by myself, it's about an hour and 15 minute drive back. And, you know, my mind is kind of wandering through this project. Um, one of the things that I've wanted to try to do was create a, uh, a, a counter or scoreboard. So every time a ball goes by, you know, you can rack up a point. Um, and I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to do that. And this is something that I've, I've thought about from the beginning of this project. I've had several ideas, some that I've tried and some that just haven't worked out the way I've wanted them. They haven't been consistent. Um, but it was during this drive yesterday uh, that all of a sudden the idea just kind of came to me. And, and it's simple. It's something that I should have been able to think about easily uh, before. But I think what happens is, you know, you're, you're working in your space. Um, there are so many things going on that you really have a hard time, I have a really hard time um, clearing space in my mind long enough to work through an idea to see if it would work or not. So this drive back allowed me to do that to a point where it was almost a bit scary. I made it from point A to point B back down to my shop without really remembering what I saw on the road or whatever. I mean, it was just like I time traveled between leaving and arriving at the shop. I don't remember anything in between. Um, scary because I don't know if, there, <laughs> if anything happened. Um, but I was kind of just in my head and found the idea that I was looking for. And so maybe um, uh, maybe by next week's live video, no, nah, it would have to be sooner than that. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll start doing that. You'll see some of that stuff on Instagram, but sometimes taking those forced timeouts to get away from the shop kind of helps you rethink and kind of regroup. And uh, yeah, it was really worth it. It was really worth kind of getting away after everything was said and done. Gosh dog on it, it did it again. It's right there at that little, it's right there at the point. It's not wanting to fuse properly. All good, all good, we got it going. Yeah, I think that's going to work out well. Thank you, California. That was awesome.
Okay. Okay, so for some reason the connection between the camera and the program Streamlabs just froze. So I had to restart Streamlabs. And what you're probably going to see right now is a very delayed um, response because the signal from the camera to Streamlabs to YouTube goes from bad to good to great. And so it takes a little bit. So hey, I'm back. I'm back. Alright, so I wasn't sure if maybe maybe I triggered something by grabbing this cord. I don't know. Um, I hope not, but in any case, I'm back. Back in the saddle again. Back. Okay. All right. So I gotta grab my grinder real quick. Hang on just a second. Let's spin you back over here so you're not all by yourself. There we go. I needed to make sure that the the track side was clear uh, and I had a couple little uh, TIG bobbles there that would have given me some trouble. So there we go. Let's see if we can take this to the next step up. All right, just need to bend that slightly. Give me a little bit more of an incline. All right, let's start over. Are you in there? Yeah, you're in there. Okay, here we go. Up. Oh, and no bueno. All right, so let's see if we can put a little bit of a harder bend on that. We're getting there, we're getting there. That could be a little closer. That's easy to fix. So here, here, here. I think we're getting someplace. So what I've got to be careful of now is I'm going to have to put some kind of something that holds these in place so that they don't slide out. But that's easy. That's easy to do. But I think that's the way to go. Adding in those Adding in those little trusses, or gussets, truss gussets, um, definitely helps. Although, what happens is it starts to come out of this area, so we're gonna have to keep it nice and tight. So I gotta put like a keeper or something there. So, but it's getting there. Super excited about that. Let me move this back up a little bit. Um, When you pull the trigger on TIG, the camera flashes sometimes. Oh, okay, that's good to know. I wonder if I, like, 
kind of cup my hand around it if that will help. I'll try next time. Okay, so I'm gonna keep that momentum of doing that, but then what I will do is we'll make some kind of keeper that keeps it. So let's do another one. I really like the look of those little trusses too. Alright, so let's get the spacer. I think what I could probably do Hang on just a second. I gotta go grind it this tip real quick. That's better. That's even better. Okay. Now. Put a little tack weld on that baby right there. It would help if I put it on the right surface. There we go. While I have it here on a piece of steel, let's put the other ones on. Okay. Got the drill. Let's make sure that those are opened up. So I've got three more of these little levers that I'm going to add the trusses to. And then we'll be ready to try it. All right, let's see. Probably do about the same.
Anybody out there hear about the um, Makers camp that just happened? Um, I think it was in the, the Catskills, so East Coast. I know I saw a bunch of of the um, saw a bunch of makers posting on Instagram, basically. Um, I know Jimmy and Derek from Malden, Laura, um, Graz. I uh, forget who else I saw out there, but yeah, it looked like there was quite a few people out there this weekend. Looked like it was kind of fun. I'm not sure exactly what they did. You know how sometimes, you know, they'll do like a, a blacksmithing camp or, you know, like a, a wood turning camp, but this would just said maker's camp. So I don't know if they just did like a variety of demos. Maybe it's gonna be a new annual thing. I think they already said that it was a lot of fun and that they'll probably do it again. Oh, yeah, 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 that was the, uh, uh, it wasn't really a chainsaw, but it looked like a, a circular saw flamethrower. That was very cool. I meant to uh, call Bernie and let him know, dude, that was awesome. That's something that I wouldn't mind getting more involved in is doing like flame stuff. I think at some point, that's my goal, is to just make fun things like that. I even thought about like next year, um, going back to Burning Man, uh, they do a lot of flame stuff there. And if you ever get out to Las Vegas, uh, a buddy of mine who we worked on a big project for Burning Man, I think it was 2011, um, go down to Fremont Street, go down to what's called the Container Park, and there's a big fire-breathing praying mantis. Um, and when they're not actually performing it, but if you see somebody tall, kind of spiky blonde hair, um, his name is Merrick, go in and say hi Merrick from Doug. So, yeah, he's got a pretty sweet gig. Goes out there on the strip, or not even the strip, but in Fremont, and then just does the fire poofer for the praying mantis. Now he does all the maintenance and he's re upgraded that sucker. So he does a lot more than just push buttons. But the guy's amazing. So Barry, you're not getting anything. Are you getting any audio, Barry? Or is it just the video? Because according to what I have, it shows that I'm going, and Jason, you see me, right? Yeah, streaming says good. All right. Cool. Oh, oh. oh, I gotta go sharpen this little puppy up again. Ah, oh. this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Well, it's not a challenge, it's just the plug that I have. Oh, did I lose it again? Oh, am I back? I'm back again, okay. 
I wonder what's going on with my signal today. It's usually pretty good. All right, I have got to Let's see. Oh, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. There's like this big delay. But I'm going to move you back over here for a second. Go back over here. So Jason, are you seeing me or hearing me, Jason? Okay, I don't know what is fluctuating or not, but maybe the maybe the frequency on the uh, on the TIG machine is interfering the signal. Well, it shouldn't be interfering the signal because I'm hardlined into into my computer there. I don't know what it is. I'm paying good money. I should have internet locked nonstop. That's why I upgraded, so I didn't have to like have these problems. All right. So I honestly wonder if it's the TIG machine um, kind of picking up the interference for some reason today. I don't know. Jason, you mentioned that it flashed. I wonder maybe, I mean, because when I go back on here, the, the signal is still coming from the camera into Streamlabs, but Streamlabs uh, basically freezes, and I have to go back in and remove 
the camera, re-add the camera, and it's there right away, and then push the stream back in, and it seems fine. Um, so we'll see. I don't need to take any more for right now. I do notice sometimes, like on the radio, like if I TIG, that I will get a, a fluctuation in the signal um, if I'm TIGging or even plasma cutting. All right, well, let's just see what we can do with all of these. All right, those are cool enough for me. First two landed really nice. All right, well look, it actually looks kind of cool. And then we'll have to see if when it gets over here, I don't think it's going to be high enough. I might have to put one more over here so as it gets up. Yeah, I'll we'll have to put one more. Um, but let's see what happens. We'll try to keep all of these together. There's one. There's two. There's three, it got further away, so we need to bring that one in a little bit. So let's try to go up again, that one, that one, we need to bring this one in a bit. That one, we need to bring that one in a bit. Definitely brings it up. I'm pretty pleased with that. Jason, I might have to use your idea with going a little extra track um, just because it seems like, you know, between where the two rails are and this track is, I might need to add just another thickness there. Um, you know, so maybe, maybe just going in like a two, a two thickness, you know, that might help it. Whoa, Roy, welcome there, man. Holy crikey, look at you. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That is greatly appreciated. Hey, and I noticed you had a live feed too and I totally missed it. Man, I'm sorry. I get so focused on this stuff right now that uh, I'm not having a chance to sit around and, and, and watch stuff. So I gotta, I gotta keep my eyes out for you on your live feed. So anyway, so yeah, this is, this is actually working now. So I'm really pleased at the way this is coming out. Um, One of, the, one of the hard parts is this is all gonna be enclosed. So, uh, let me get over here. This acrylic box at this point doesn't have any access into the box, which my gut says I've gotta put something in there. Um, but trying to cut into a half inch acrylic box without damaging it, um, I've just been very hesitant. That box cost right around uh, uh, fifteen hundred dollars to make, um, and then I'm going to have a four foot by ten foot half inch piece of glass sitting on top of it. So if a ball falls off, it's going to stay off for a while. Um, so I need to make sure that these balls don't fall off. So I'm really super stoked about this lifter. 
Oh, and I gotta show you. Um, so I had started, I started uh, this lifter a, a few days ago and I went and used all the stainless that I had and I had like a quarter inch inside diameter stainless tube over a quarter inch outside diameter. But what was happening every time um, you would push, you know, it would bind up a little bit and it would go brrrr, and it would ribble. So we have a company here called Bearing Belt and Chain. They might be in some of the bigger companies or bigger uh, states, cities. And while I was there looking for some gears, they actually had this cool little sucker. And it's set up for quarter inch rod. And it just, it smooth. So there's bearings inside of there that actually allow this to slide back and forth, no problem. But then I could put a mounting plate, which is what I did there, so that this can slide back and forth. Um, 95 bucks for that little puppy right there. So, I bought two, just in case I jacked that one up building this, but looks like that's going well, so I might have the opportunity to make two of these lifters um, inside the box. But, yeah, man, this was like super great. I'm not even sure what they call it, uh, but it, it's, it's like, a, it's just a little bearing. Worked great. Oh, tomorrow night, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. I will stop by most, oh, I'm gonna say will. Uh, tomorrow night, that's Friday night. Um, gotta take the girl, it's her birthday weekend, and uh, taking her to a hotel here locally, doing a little staycation. Um, if I can sneak away and check out the live video, uh, I will definitely do that <laughs> without getting caught. Oh yeah, Jason, so yeah, you're right. Um, need to make a bottom slope to one direction and have a collection for loose balls to restart the lifter. Yes, you know, I might have mentioned this before. Um, the, the current base that is in here right now actually does have a bit of a slant, uh, a bit of an incline. So there is probably about an inch uh, of height all the way down to zero at the end. So you got four feet going zero, four, uh, one inch to zero, and then another four feet of one inch to zero. With that same intention, ball falls off, it rolls back, it gets back into line, and it gets back in the system. Well, here's what I realized. And let me see if I can pull you a little bit closer without jacking up my internet connection again. And I'm gonna see if I can zoom in and point out that lifter. Okay, so let me tilt you down here a little bit. Thanks, be patient with me here. Okay, so where you see that ball at the bottom of the step, the idea was that any balls that fell off would actually roll back to that point. However, sorry. In order for the balls to do what they're supposed to do, there is a track that comes right in here as well. That track blocks any access into this area. So all the balls would get trapped without a way to get back into the system. So, without having a way to get the balls back into the system um, easily, then I realized, well, I just have to make it so that the balls don't fall off the track. And so that's kind of what my plan has been now, is I put guardrails on, 
Um, anything that has any type of uh, vibration as the ball goes around, I put more supports in. So yes, the idea is so that the balls simply don't fall off. Uh, probably by next week, I will have all of this complete and I'm gonna invite some folks over and just say, play with it, see what happens. And if I find that uh, the ball falls off, gets stuck, or you know maybe I've got a snag somewhere, make a note, put it on the punch list, fix it. And uh, just kind of make it fail proof so that it doesn't do that. So, and yes, here's what happens is because of the short distance that I have, um, trying to get a ball, even trying to get a, a ball up an inch and a half to get back on a track has been a challenge um, without starting someplace and sending it down there. So yeah, some, some of the tracks, and I'll show a video at some point, some of the tracks go all kind of crazy and then they drop it back onto a track that brings it back to the, uh, the beginning. Ah, oh, slow motion, that'd be nice. Okay, so back on this, um, because I need to keep moving, making sure that this will work, I believe, and as long as I keep... Ah, okay, so we got to... We got to make sure that that one doesn't bend out. So let's bend him in slightly. Right, that goes up, and that one doesn't want to go up at all now. All right, so... So it's definitely going to take some some work to get this thing done, um, but I definitely need to build another another piece so that it can get up and go out the back side here. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. We need more of this. Thanks for all the great ideas. Sometimes working by yourself and you can't really come up with other ideas because you run into a wall in your mind and it's hard to get off of an idea that may not work. Okay, um... Great. So I'm right behind the camera right now, basically bending this little rod just real quick. in my vise so got to put a nice little 90 in there and then what we're going to do is we're going to make another uh, what do you call it uh, gusset is that what we'll call it is a gusset a gusset kind of goes in between what is the word what is the word? All right.
Okay, so here's gonna be a test. Jason, I don't know if you're still here, um, but I'm going to TIG weld again. And we're gonna see if this actually stalls the camera. Aha, it did. It did, it stalled the camera. All right, that's interesting. That is wild. There we go, we're back, but there's the other camera. So that's the issue. Hmm. That's strange because uh, the first time I did a live feed, I was TIG welding and I don't recall having that issue. That's strange. I wonder what that could be. I wonder if it's the flash in the camera or if it's something in the frequency. Um, because like I said, I think the camera still does its thing. Um, and all I have to do in Streamlabs is I go and I uh, remove that video capture device. And then I reinstall the video capture, or reapply the video capture device. Starts back up again, no problem. Strange. Yeah, totally electrical. Totally electrical. Um, so yeah, I'll have to kind of keep that in mind uh, as far as doing these live streams. TIG welding seems to jack the frequency. That's bizarre. All right. So let's measure up again. Two and a half is what I have here. And that gets me to this next level, which I can then Because I need to make a little spacer, we need to make a little half inch spacer. I'm going to turn you guys over this way. The arc is producing radio interference. Huh, I wonder if. Yeah, that's weird because last time I was doing the live thing, um, it didn't create interference. I wonder if maybe the proximity of the, I don't know, maybe the computer or the camera and the machine, maybe it's all just a little too close. I'm gonna turn you over here for a second. All right. I've got some stainless rod that I have to make another little Piece spacer. Pardon the noise for a second.
Don't pick it up, it's hot. Okay, so I'll tell you another story. All right, here, let's go back over here. Okay, so some of you know I was in the circus many years ago. We're going to go back over here for a second. Thanks. Um, So, I was 18 years old. I had graduated high school. And when I got out of high school, I went to the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College. And yes, there was a clown college. It's not in, uh, around anymore but it was the only way that you could actually get into the Ringling Brothers Circus as a clown. You had to go through their college. And it was 10 and a half weeks of intense clown stuff. You going? Are you with that stump? Okay, are you backed up to it? Yep. Okay, hang on guys, just a second. Oh, my bad. We got a big stump we gotta lift up. door neighbor he's heading up to uh, go camping on his property and so he takes all the excess wood and junk that uh, that I toss away or he has for pallets and whatnot I had this big sycamore stump that's been sitting out there for a while uh, so anyway so clown college um, hot stuff that's where I was talking about so we had this old guy named George Schellenberger and he had a shop that was on the property for the circus, and he did all of the count clown props. This guy was like, he was a welder, carpenter, I mean, this guy did everything. And um, kind of an older guy, a little bit quirky, a little fun. And the fun things that he would do to like entertain himself is, you know, he would do something like that where he'd cut a piece of metal off and some, you know, young 18 year old knucklehead, hey, can you go grab that for me? And sure, you walk over, you want to be nice, and you pick it up, and you go, ah! He would laugh his ass off and think that was the funniest thing. I'm like, dude, seriously, you got whelps on people's fingers. But yeah, so that's that always reminds me of George Schellenberger. And uh, the fact that, you know, he'd always burn people's fingers. Uh, okay, so I'm taking a half inch piece of stainless quarter inch rod and I'm going to take my eighth inch drill bit. I'm going to drill a tube. Barry, we'll see you bud. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you tonight. So was I clowning around in college? Yes, actually I was. Um, there were all kinds of, hang on. I hope I don't have like a bald spot on top of my head or something like that. So this is, every time I do this, I'm like going, I need to get like a metal lathe, but I can just turn my own little Duma hickeys. So yeah, Clown College, ten and a half weeks. We uh, studied everything from making costumes to putting on your makeup to juggling to stilt walking to unicycle riding. Uh, we studied 
um, the old silent films. I know my head's kind of cut off here, uh, but I wanted you to see everything here. Um, let me back up a little bit with this thing. Maybe that'll be better. Better? So yeah, we would study all kinds of things. Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, Harold Lloyd, Three Stooges. I mean, it's great. You go to class just to watch the Three Stooges. Wiley Coyote and uh, the Roadrunner. That was my class. We actually had a class that was a pie throwing class. And it taught you the proper techniques to throw in a pie. Bet you didn't know there were proper techniques. I didn't. But yeah, um, we even had, uh, somebody taught fire breathing. So yeah, we had acrobatics. I was big in the acrobatic scene. I could do all kinds of flips and things back then. And then we were rehearsing for our graduation and uh, I tore a ligament in my ankle. And I was gonna have to Leave clown college. I'm like, there is no way, man. I just, I got too hard to get there. See, MIG welding doesn't stop it. This must be a higher frequency. All right, now. Oh, hang on just a second. My scrap guy's here. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Doing my uh, live feed here on YouTube. Yeah, a whole bunch of beer cans. Here you go. How many followers you got? That. You know how many followers you got? Um, all of my channel itself is just over 1,000. So I'm going to for it. Cool. Go for it. Uh, some of this stuff I'll get rid of. There you go. I'm just getting to keep the huh? Yeah. For now. This it's metal, huh? Yeah, it's actually stainless. And, uh, oh, really? Yeah, a lady wants me to, to rust it up for her, so I gotta rust it up. Oh, stainless? I know, right? Why would you do that? Uh, Art? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's stainless. This, this is steel, though, right? Yeah, that's all steel. Yeah. Uh, This is, that's got some sharp edges on it. That's good. That is the sharp edge. So. All right, cool. Okay, thank you. You got it. Okay. JG Clark, you know what? Yeah, it was pretty hard at the time. Um, my particular year, uh, see, that was 85. Woo, 85. Uh, we had 2,000 applicants to go try to get into Clown College. Uh, we had 60 actually get in. We had 58 graduate. And of those that graduated, we had, I want to say we had 20 actually get contracts to go on the show. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was a little, little tricky to get in. Um, our graduation was a performance for the owner of the circus and based on what he saw in the performance uh, he would then pick and choose uh, who he wanted to go on the shows and then we would get a one-year contract so yeah it was a lot of fun I mean it was, you're definitely into it more for the travel the adventure uh, not the money um, I think my first 
year as a clown on the circus, um, grossed 185, and I brought home like 150 bucks a week, um, and that was working 13 shows a week. Uh, each show was two and a half hours long. I had 13 spots in the show that I had to be on, and back then, all the costumes were were made with handmade sequins. And so one of my costumes was right around 85 pounds. And so, you know, you're you're wearing those also. So What's the most popular major at Clown College? Political science? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, politics is big in clowns. That's for sure. We got enough of those in the office right now. Um yeah, biggest major. I would say walking stilts. That was the tallest major. Yeah, everybody kind of had their own thing. I mean, I was kind of more of a slaps and falls kind of kind of clown. Uh, very physical. So I was the type of person who would, you know, throw himself downstairs or you know take a bunch of falls uh, to kind of get the laugh. Or as somebody else, or maybe kind of like the cutesy kind of clown. Um, yeah, I was more slaps and falls. I feel it now. Um, my back and my knees, I mean, they're shot now. Okay, let's keep working on this. All right, I think we're making progress. But I think what needs to happen now is I need a way to keep these in. So I think maybe a bar like so. Yeah, something that goes across there and captures it, so to speak. But let's see, is this Getting up there is no problem. So far, so good. All right, we lost that one, but we haven't really bent that one into place yet. So let's put that back over here. And then I'll have to have something that pushes it out right there. Okay. So I think we're doing good on this. Um, how far are we into this? We are, uh, we're kind of up and running on this. Okay. Um, did you ever have to send in the clowns? Yes, a couple times. Um, and I'm guessing you're referring to like if we had an accident and all the clowns had to come rushing out. Uh, yes. Um, there was a song that the orchestra would play because it was a live band. And I'm drawing a blank, but I want to say it was called the 12th Street Rag. Uh, so you get used to hearing certain songs and knowing that oh, okay at this part of the song i need to get ready for my next act and it was very uh methodical i guess you could say very routine um you just kind of did the show you knew exactly what you needed there were times where i had maybe 30 minutes break in a show and i had time to like take a quick nap but i'd hear something in the song and i go okay time to get up and go do this thing um one of the one of the times that we had to uh, go out onto the floor unexpectedly was during a single trapeze act. So you have rings one, two, and three, and in rings one and three, you had two performers, each one doing a single trapeze act. And it's like a big trapeze, but just with one person, and they just go back and forth and they do tricks on there. Uh, well, that one of the people in ring one fell. And so we heard the rag, and so that means every, you grab what you can, 
and you rush out to the floor. Uh, you quickly assess what's going to happen because usually the lights will go out and they'll bring up the outside, what we call the track or you know the hippodrome track. They'll bring lights up there. That way they can attend to the emergency and we can basically keep people entertained. So we could tell by running out that, okay, there was an issue up in ring one. We don't know what the issue is, but you bring something out and whether, you know, it's this, you, you happen to grab this when you go out. So as you're running out there, the idea is that you get into improv. You may grab somebody else who's also running. Okay, great. These are now a pair of dental pliers. You know, you're going to try to pull your tooth out or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, that was one of the, of the times that we had to go out. There was actually just times my very first year. Uh, there's an act in the show that we refer to as manage. Uh, it's called menagerie, but short for manage. And it's when all of the elephants come out of the backstage area and they come into the ring and they start doing their act. Not even doing their act, but you know they, they go up on, on the hind legs of each other and they kind of perform this like little pyramid looking thing. I'm, what's, I'm located in what's called Ring 3 Backtrack. So elephants would come in and I'm facing the audience and the elephants are running up the track right in front of me. And so there was a guy that was an elephant groom and so he worked with the elephants that we called Professor, older guy. He came in and he tripped right in front of me, but when he did, it was the, I want to say back left leg of the elephant stepped on his back right calf. And the elephants are gone. Now they're gone, he's in front of me screaming in pain uh, because this elephant just stepped on his leg. And my job, was to step over him and put the problem behind me uh, and basically distract from the audience while other people came out and they, they got him off and uh, took him to the hospital. Now, believe it or not, nothing happened. The guy didn't break his leg. Uh, elephants don't like to step on, on uneven surfaces. They just don't like, their feet are very tender. And so when she stepped on his leg, uh, automatically you're going, oh crap, and she pulls her weight off of that. Um, so she didn't put her full weight on his leg. Uh, felt sorry for him because the very same day coming into work, he had fallen out of the back of an El Camino uh, and had to go to the hospital to get cuts and, and bruises or whatever from falling out of the back of a Camino. Uh, and then goes back to the same hospital, same ER that night to get dealt with uh, on a leg. So anyway, so that was, you know, we've always had all kinds of crazy emergencies going on and you always kind of had to be uh, on your toes and just kind of ready to get out there and perform at any, at any given moment. So that's, that's part of my, my circus story. I have hundreds. I was there for 13 years uh, and it was an experience that I wouldn't trade for the world. And uh, yeah. It was just very, very cool. It was a very close-knit family of people. All right, so that needs some attention. All right, we're gonna go over here. And I'm gonna turn you back over this way so you're not left all alone. Give this thing a little bit more of an incline for that ball to get up. All right, we'll circle you back over here. It's a little too far, there we go. All right. Better. All right, now we need to work on these. You know, at this point right now, I'm probably gonna go ahead and cut this live feed off because I'm gonna come back on tonight at around five o'clock. I'm not sure I'll be doing a lot of the same stuff. I might be working on a reception desk table. Uh, might even be working on the big motherboard project. I don't know. Uh, I've got plenty of projects going on right now. 
Uh, I do want to say thank you to every single person who stopped by today and, you know, let me kind of ramble on while I do my work. I also want to say thank you so much uh, to, to Barry uh, for giving me some suggestions, Jason giving me some suggestions, uh, California, I'm sorry, just Halbuya, I think is how I pronounce it. Um, you know, thank you so much, you know, for getting me over that, that little bit of a, a kink there with creating this thing. So I appreciate the feedback and uh, hey, we'll see you guys maybe later on tonight. Tony, thanks for stopping in, buddy. Uh, have a great night. We'll see you. Let me see if I can figure out how to stop this puppy. There it is.